I need a haircut like Valve need to stop lying to us right now because this what you see is what you get nonsense with Subtick is not going to fly with me. All right, actually fed up with this desync between the animation and the registry. It seems like Subtick actually might be more accurate and is better than CSGO at 64 tick. But that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be better at 128. And right now, the meme, of course, with Valorant was, it's all about your gunplay and like your abilities aren't supposed to kill people. And then obviously Valorant is just like CS in that your gunplay matters, whatever. In Counter-Strike, our meme is what you see is what you get because Subtick, everything is mapped out perfectly. But what happens in reality is that since it's on 64 tick and only updates every 15 milliseconds, it just exposed what we missed on 64 tick in CSGO. So right now, how it works is you've got timestamps that happen at the moment that the event happens in game. Accurate, good. But when you see it, it's when the server updates on 64 tick every 15 milliseconds. So in a real time, fast paced, competitive FPS with good players on the other side of the server, you really don't see what you get. Let's assume for a second that this sub tick registration is better than CSGO at 64 tick. Well, it doesn't really matter. If every time you die, you don't know what happened. What you saw, what the game told you by showing you what happened, is not what actually happened. Who wants to play a game like that? Who cares if the registration is actually more accurate? If it literally looks worse? People played 10 years of CSGO and didn't know that when you click, your gun doesn't shoot until you're done flicking. In CS2, if you click along your flick, your gun registers a shot, which is more accurate than CSGO ever was. But ignorance is strength, my friend. And we had no idea that that was going on in CSGO and now, all you see is this nonsense. I don't know how much better sub tick can get. Hopefully it can get better. Math guy will tell you it's gonna save us all. Math guy will also agree that 128 tick on sub tick is going to be better. Maybe your skin inventory isn't big enough for a valve to give you 128 tick servers, whatever. They locked the tick rate as well, okay? If you missed that for face it and matchmaking, they locked it to 64 tick because it was found out that nades weren't landing in the same spot. So you could see when you smoked mid on Ancient, it had to land on this stair, but would slightly miss and go back and totally land in the wrong spot on Face It. It meant that there were two different types of lineups. The community would be bifurcated again, like it was in CSGO. So instead of Valve upgrading to 128 tick, everything is locked to 64. And I gotta say, I like the fact that at least when you're playing Premier Matchmaking, you're playing Face It or playing the same game. The nades, the registration roughly. Now the servers might be slightly better in face it, but it's not going to be as dramatic as a difference with good and bad servers as it is between 64 and 128 tick. Again, math guy will tell you that, but stop listening to people who don't even really play, okay? All right, anyway, so what's the upside? No, fuck that. Let's do some more downside. Right now, no community support. There's no source mod, no vscript too. There are mappers. There are people out there who have built out the community servers that we know and love. There are people who have built out things that cannot be ported over to source two right now because there's no tools for them to do this. This is a full release. It's a full release in the sense that the game is full of cheaters. Right now, demos aren't fully functional. The demo player is beautiful in the sense that it's like a VS VLC player. I love that. Functionally, it's great, but you still have to go down to the basement to use it. You still got this archaic UI that doesn't even allow you to go into free cam. Maybe you can't follow grenades right now. Small movement bugs, okay, that need to be fixed still. There's one at the jump height that every single time you jump, it's inconsistent. It's a little different, your height. You can test this on Mirage right now. If you go to T-spawn and press your jump bind underneath any arch, and you can see you go a little farther, you go a little less far, a little farther, a little less far. You can never get a consistent jump height unless you use this alias bind. I'll leave that down for you in the description. Myself, the KZ community, I know Rops has been helping a ton with movement. Shout out to Smizin' a Snacky. Shout out to Zero K for having the programming background and also the movement background to give a ton of feedback because Valve have, without listing it in the patch notes, updated and fixed the game. They've definitely done something with B-hopping. They've fixed the jump bug, which was pretty massive because you could go flying up into the air if you jump bugged onto a higher platform. And they also left jump bug in the game instead of just removing it, which is very nice. And listen, Counter-Strike is built on bugs, especially movement bugs. It's part of the reason I would say 
this game stands out. Air strafing, bunny hopping, bugs. Okay, so Valve have listened to feedback, adjusted things. They've adjusted a bunch of crouch penalty stuff. They just adjusted movement speed in mud. They allowed you to crouch in air without fatigue. They have made it feel very much like CSGO. And now it's getting more and more optimized. In the beta, I'd say more than half the people playing were experiencing bad game. Now it's more and more optimized. That's good, okay? But this ain't a full release, but well, they said this summer. Like it was vague enough that they had all the way until the very last day of summer and then a couple days just because it is valve time. But it seems like they didn't get everything done that they needed to get done. They released the game just after summer only because of the pressure they put on themselves to release it in the summer, but tried to give it as much time as they possibly could before they had to. And I think that's almost unlike valve in the sense that yes, it was even a couple days late, which most companies just simply wouldn't do that. They would just push something, they would get it done, work the fucking last week, double overtime, every single person. But Valve, they make sure it's quality every time. This time, I think it was 70% the new release. And as the updates have come in this week, you gotta say the game is feeling very nice, all right? But this is all just critical of that. MR12, by the way, very nice, very nice. Haven't had one single complaint. Any of my, my friends playing in ECL, any of my most talented friends that I'm playing with, everyone's fine with MR12. It's been great. Been playing nonstop, okay? But that gets to another problem here. What the hell is going on with the cheaters? Now today, there was a big ban wave apparently aim where the biggest cheat in cs2 was caught dragon lures dopplers level 100 steam accounts all banned nothing feels better than that that's great but it needs to be like okay there's probably cheaters in valor right that are getting away with it just for now whatever they don't have a cheating problem people will go on face it i i, I saw someone say face it's full of cheaters you know intrusive anti-cheat it really doesn't make a difference uh shut the fuck up honestly like no one thinks there's more cheaters in face it than matchmaking it doesn't matter how much math you have you're not going to be able to explain your way out of that one okay no one's that stupid it works the intrusive anti-cheat works if there's another solution math guy i'd love to hear it because it seems like you know all the problems but not the solutions okay vacnet super appealing as a concept and i really appreciate how valve you know it's been an insane ride of innovation and amazing things and genius that have come out of valve and vacnet seemed to be a cool idea with deep learning machine that can ban all the cheaters and you know hopefully it does but it's been six years since john mcdonald gave that talk at uh, gdc about vacnet and the trust system which again seemed to be very cool and it did seem like in 2023 more cheaters are getting banned than ever but right now in cs2 at the top level of mmr people are getting cheaters all the time on streams okay and it takes me back to the battlenet days in starcraft they used to have leaderboards people would literally just cheat to advertise cheats on the leaderboard by getting their name as high up as possible. And that's what Valve knew they would risk with public leaderboards in the game in CS2. So I gotta believe they have a plan because they're just not that stupid. But at the same time, I'm sure they would have wanted Vacnet to be 100% impervious, a fucking wall no one could get through in CSGO. And yet, instead it was that meme. Right? Of the guy touching everybody walking into a club, but not even touching them. So why would that change in CS2 if it was probably meant to work in CSGO? I have no idea. I can't justify that. I don't know. It's like I can say all the things that I know are true. I know a Valve are smart. I think largely they've made a ton of right decisions, get criticized a lot more for the bad decisions. And there are some, to be fair. But overall, what other game would you rather be in right now? CSGO got to that near perfect mark at the end. It was actually, it's actually insane. Okay, and it's actually easier when you have a meta that changes and you can just blame the meta for like problems in the game and balance everything and keep rebalancing. So people always have a problem to complain about. In CSGO, people were acutely aware of every single detail of every single map. And yet there was barely any criticism about the performance of the game, different things at the end for CSGO because shit was so ironed out. You gotta give them credit for that. It's actually amazing. So for me, this is a, a rant about how this wasn't a full release. Um, the anti-cheat is up for question. 64 tick, tick list would be better at 128. The animation's not lining up and looking like interp, which might not be interp. It's hard to say if it's a sub tick problem, an interp problem, whatever. And then a handful of convars that we all want back. Right hand, zero, free Bob, please, for the love of God, free Bob. Valve, nobody cares, okay? In a competitive game, this isn't a single player game. And if it was, it wouldn't even matter there. People do not care what our shadows look like. Lock the shadows to right hand on 25 Bob 
for everybody, but let us client side use right hand zero and CL Bob five so our game looks more serious. And for the love of God, fix the fucking legs. It feels like I'm playing Source again. I hate it. I want it to feel serious. This game's not meant to be like realistic where you need like iron sights and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want that. We don't want that. But like, just get as far away from Source as possible. Okay. Other than that, man, I mean, I'm getting 500 FPS. Responsiveness is crisp right now for me. There are like 21 ways on every map, but I actually don't mind the one ways in, in CS2 because you can shoot the tops of smokes and shooting on the edge of smokes is really nice mechanic. It's going to give us some amazing moments. I don't think one ways are going to be nearly as strong when people learn anything about the maps at all. Moving while shooting is very strong with shotguns and SMGs. High fire rate guns are way overpowered in my opinion. FAMA is super strong. A4 is very strong. Completely eclipses the A1S. And then again, all the SMGs. And uh, spraying. I mean, I actually think spraying is great. I don't have the same opinion as everyone else. I gotta say, I had an excellent spray in CSGO, and I can get that spray extremely tight on a wall. CSGO, CS2, when I spray at people, I've had many spray transfers so far in the game. I am having a fine time spraying. My main issue, when I what I think, is there was a very good video that I can't find right now from CSGO that explained why 64 tick might be very close to 128, but the uh, issues with it get exacerbated the higher ping you go. And right now, playing on high ping in CS2 is brutal. I think that sprays break down the higher the ping you get. I think that the animations not lining up with the sprays might be messing you up sometimes. People use their view models, people use where the bullets land, people have first person tracers on or off, it depends on the person but all these things can affect your spray for sure. In the right hands, the spray is fine, so I don't think it's a registration problem, unless it's high ping, and then I can see that it, that it could be a global problem, but okay, that's actually fine for me. I think the registration might be better. The problem with movement for me is that Rops did this test where he proved that if you're a good enough player, in particular, if you understand movement, you can identify 64 tick, 120 tick easily. Rops did his routes on nuke to get into mini, right? to go up to silo as fast as possible, off the ladder jump. And in this combo, you can instantly tell when you get 64 tick because of the laggy hops. When you spray, you get a laggy frame. I don't know if people realize that, but when your bullets feel like they're going missing on 64 tick, that's what it is. And if you B hop in CS2, it's very strange. It feels like a mix between 128 and 64 tick, which I guess is what the sub tick is, but you still get the 64 tick laggy hops, but the B hopping feels better than it did in CSGO. So very weird behavior right now. Something, some's good, some's bad. I wanna know if sub tick can get better, but okay. On that note, the most important thing in CS2 that we've got is that we finally have an option to disable right click to remove silencers. You still got a free bob. For all my ASON users, I'm using natural in game, okay? Crisp is great, natural's fine though. Every audio setting has been fantastic with ASON. You, you know if you got one. People will learn. You put on the ASONs, you're playing a different game. CS2 audio is fantastic. You want to mess with any settings. I'll put my word on that, okay? You get a pair of ASONs, you're gonna be playing a different game. It's something you have to hear to believe, but when you do, You'll understand. Anyways, all right, enjoy. We've got some more Boxer merchandise on the store. If it's still in stock, go ahead, check that out. Start at Boxer.gg. Thank you for watching. This was a full review of CS2.